Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder. My back is back in the game, and so I'm ready to once more carry teams. <coughs> okay, bad jokes are for free on this channel, you know what you have subscribed to. And yes, I know, it's again a Naval Forces gameplay, but this might be one of the best games that I played, period. And uh, I think it's worth showing as an opener since this week, well, there was just one video and it's now Friday and you guys are used to daily content. So sorry about this, but uh, my health had kind of priority. And it seems like I have largely recovered, which is really great news. So, so much for that. I am today, obviously, once again in the awesome Soviet premium river patrol boat that is the MBK Project 186 MK85 and it is just the best. The mixture of speed, armor and firepower together with secondaries is just unmatched in my opinion throughout the nations. No other nation, especially at this battle rating, has this kind of performance and uh, yeah it is undoubtedly overpowered but I don't care. And I have several projects running that I intend to fulfill with this ship. And since tanks are currently postponed for me till Monday for one video that I made that I think is pretty okay and uh, is in response to the Battlefield Engineer event with an awesome, awesome gameplay that I just need to show you. I think now it's between aircraft and ships up until Monday. Um, well, that's at least the plan. So I charge here forward with full speed, harvesting enemy patrol boats left, right and center. So very interesting is here uh, this fight with this uh, patrol boat because he smokes up and turns away. This is how you use smoke. You lay the smoke barrier between you and the enemy and you don't charge out of it again. Oof. <laughs> he, he could have escaped. And my guns have an awful lot of range to deal with pesky patrol boats. So I hit here the engine and knock it out, um, period, while I help to repair one of my teammates and now I finish him off with finally hitting the last compartment. And I'm charging fearlessly through the smoke, already being first place. And, well, what about the missions? Well, first of all, I still want to farm all the war bonds that there are, period. And I also want to get the boosters for the 10 war bonds since they just can be picked up on the way. 10 war bonds is like nothing. On top of this, I want to get to the battle trophy, vehicle 3, and therefore I also need uh, 14 special task medals. And they are, well, they cost 30 um, war bonds to unlock, and I need 14 of them, so I better make lots of them. And I already saved some 2300 war bonds from last month to uh, also pay for the 3400 at, at the end uh, of, well, this war bond session which i have 20 days left the next thing is that on top of this i want to just pad my stats yes this is one of those vehicles where i really do it and i have a kill to death ratio that is kind of absurd i played 189 battles have a 70 percent win ratio and uh while i died 183 times i still killed 106 aircraft and 1000 22 ships that's a lot and while i did this i always had a premium account okay and i often used also boosters however the funny thing is that i'm also working towards the ace qualification by playing for it with this premium battle rating 3.0 ship and the ace qualification costs 960 thousand research points that's a million research points and i had that kind of statistics and it still will take me like 200 battles to get there um 35,000 uh, rp short of it that's nearly a million rp for a battle rating 3.0 ship and i also want to figure out later what the difference it really makes and this will be the first ship period that has the 
ace that will have the ace qualification for tanks there are multiple more and especially for planes there are also more because i think it's just easy to get with them and uh, that is just something that i wanted to point out so now i wanted to actually go into c and that was my plan but it didn't work out since I just missed the entry and I cannot turn around because that is one of the weaknesses of the armor scheme of the ship. The side armor with 30 millimeter it doesn't really sound impressive but it holds up and the bulkheads they are the weakness they are only four millimeters strong that is not a lot so going bow in just helps you so much versus maybe low caliber AP that can disappears in there however if you angle there is front side plating of 12 millimeters and that will just screw with the penetration mechanics of the shells and so getting in angled you can very often fire both uh, cannons and just keep your citadel alive and that is the secret together with the 85 millimeter guns why the ship is so good please notice here that i switched to ap the problem is this guy now he knocks out my front turret the back turret will not swing around in time and machine guns just run out of ammunition with six percent of this health left of this guy or crew if you will and so the od 200 kills me from the side by breaching through my 30 millimeters with a clear side shot but after 11 kills and one plane kill, which is absolutely balanced, and you saw that I charged directly into the enemy, let's respawn in a backup, because why not, you know? And uh, this is what I did recently a lot with this ship, and I think it pays off, and it just helps with the win ratio. Normally, you know, after this I would say, okay, it's fine, uh, I had my fun, okay, let's go into the next battle. But very often, uh, the team manages to then lose this since on the enemy team there are some capable players and they just wipe clean through my team with their guns so yeah I need to do something about it and you can see that there are threatening C that's the first kill now let's clean up that guy and uh, in particular the single firing of the 85 millimeter guns is just what I love to do oh yes let's blow up some shit now one of the disadvantages of the ship come a little bit in since speed in the beginning of the battle is just not so much of an issue since you just arrive within weapon range of the enemy very soon but if you respawn and that spawn is just a bit too far away from the action well you're kind of useless but i think the whole package of armor and firepower is just simply better and on top of this, you know, the 85mm guns are stabilized with impressive uh, firing angles. You might see on the back of the ship in just a moment that near the back turret there are some toolboxes that normally would just obscure a certain firing arc. But because it's Soviet and it's premium, your guns actually go through the hitboxes, which they don't do on the Tech Tree version. I'm just saying... And uh, also here I didn't get a kill assist despite hitting the MPK-163 with some 85mm shots. But, you know, this is just how War Thunder works out. It's always very important to secure your flanks, in particular in this thing. All the more surprising is it, uh, game after game, how little people how to know how to knock those, this thing out. If you are in a Soviet river patrol boat yourself, load the armor piercing and shoot through the middle. Even if you die in the process, you just have breached the citadel of the ship, okay, with armor piercing. Don't ask why. You then are going into the tank RB damage model, okay, when there is armor involved. And remember, if you are in a Soviet river patrol boat yourself, you're firing not AP or APHE. You're firing APHE BC Magic Stalinium shells. I'm not kidding. They work wonders. The same goes then for the few German ships that actually have armor piercing um, or APHE or APCVC as they have it. And uh, that still works fine. And I think that the front and the stern section of the ship, they can easily be destroyed by any other ship. But as long as the Citadel is just fine, the ship won't go down no matter how much he or armor piercing you throw at the angled armor or the front section or the rear section this ship is an absolute terror machine and in the hands of a good player 
It works wonders. It's just an absolute powerhouse. So here I'm single firing with the front cannon at this ship and I always look at also the hit camera where I hit the enemy and which section is there still to be destroyed. And so you can pick apart the enemies rather quickly. Very often people go bow in and they actually do the one thing that uh, they do that they should do go bow in because then they drastically reduce the amount of AG damage and it just takes a while to whittle down an enemy with the AP from the front when there is no armor involved since then it's just a death by a thousand uh, cuts I would say so very often a lot of people then in panic turn away and then they just open up their flanks where you then happily can insert some HE fun and profit from it. So already 14 kills and two planes. Let's see what we can do on top of this. Yes, hull break, some more hull break. I love it. I love it. And in pure ship terms, that is a triple ace. Yes, I've died once, but hey, still, you need to get the kills in the first place. Yes, I was lucky that there was nobody else, um, you know, robbing my kills when I was just farming an enemy and that I actually got the kills and not a lot of kill assists because I had battles in the ship where I got 10, 15 kill assists and that's just really annoying i mean you still do a lot of damage to enemy ships and you kill a few ships here and there in particular well when hull broke mechanics are involved but still you know to get the kill assists period um not just once or twice but up to 10 15 times that's just really annoying so i wanted to share this battle with you because everything went according to plan and the initial charge believe it or not was i think the game deciding charge because I interrupted the enemy's deployment and I went in and killed somebody that was covering that was seeking cover behind the island with a big big mortar gun and just um, trying to lob shells over the island while being more or less immune than to incoming fire. And I don't know what's wrong with people in this match and their obsession with spawning into G5s or PR123s of any sort of variation and just to try to rush a cap. But I take it. So I have I had harder fights in this thing. I gunned down destroyers, believe it or not, at five kilometers distance. This is also something that this ship can do. And uh, it's pretty hard for them to hit you at five kilometers. It's possible, but uh, they also still then have to breach through your armor. And German destroyers that don't have AP, they have a hard time. With the exception, and this is pretty funny, of the K2, which now has a PT boat spawn. Because reasons <laughs> so that was one of the most glorious decisions by Gaijin when it comes to naval warfare design but hey who am I to touch this is now end game and I'm kind of bored because there are no more enemies to shoot and I think this is one of the restricting factors because I could farm enemies like this all day long and this is now my quadruple ace okay 18 ship kills and two aircraft kills. I think that this is just amazing. So if there is any sort of fun ship, any sort of ship where you can reliably carry in, it is obviously the Russian premium river patrol boat. Because why not? And there we get it, Terror of the Sea. So sadly no survival medal, but I kind of hope that you can understand that... Um, I'm okay with it, okay? And so for our quadruple ace, 18 kills and two plane kills, we got on top of three assists, 159, nearly 160,000 silver lines and nearly 15,000 modification research without any sort of booster. I think that is epic. That is one of those results that I always want to share with you where everything went according to plan or let's say nearly everything went according to plan when I went back into the game after a certain break I think this is a good way to start my rampage 
in naval forces once more and uh, I told you now all the secrets about the Russian premium river patrol boats use that knowledge try it out try it out in a custom battle with your friends it's the armor piercing to the center of the ship which sounds kind of obvious but yeah now you have known it and uh, with uh, 19,427 ship damage and 4,351 score points I think I earned first place that is something that you don't even see very often in cruiser fights <laughs> so that is one hell of a result and um, yeah it just played very well that that was enough for me to shoot in the first place that's enough for me today so <laughs> thanks for watching thanks for listening please give this video a like if you did subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other in the skies on the battlefields and on the waves of war thunder